Club. We're so excited that you joined us today. Will you help us sing this song? It's one you should be familiar with because we've been singing it every week. Here we go. Good news, good news. so that you can get familiar with and you can join us in singing too, okay? Here's how it goes. I'm going to start out with just singing it regular. What can wash away? Last week we talked about how that parrots can mimic 
human voice, which was really pretty cool, wasn't it? This week, we're gonna talk about the parrot's colors, and we're gonna find out why parrots are so brightly colored. Remember, to be classified as a parrot, the bird has to have a curved beak, really hard curved beak, okay? It's gotta have four toes, two that face the front and two that face the back. Now, parrots are omnivores. That means that they can eat both meat and vegetables. Most parrots eat a diet that contains nuts, flowers, fruit, buds, seeds, and insects. Seeds are their favorite food, of course. They have these strong jaws that allow them to snap open nutshells to get the seeds that are on the inside. Kias have a special longer beak that digs down and it can get dig into um, the ground and get insects out. Keep, there's another bird called a cockapoo and they actually chew the vegetation and drink the juices. Now, check this out. Do you see this bird? Okay, it's very brightly colored, isn't it? But now look, see how the back of her blends right into the darkness of the nest cavity? As it turns out, red blends into the dark inside of a tree better than black does. I didn't know that. But guess what? God, who created the bird, knew this, and he made her special that way. God also knew that the wild parrots who live in the rainforest environment would be camouflaged when they are among the brightly colored flowers, fruits, and berries that are in their homes. Their feather colors make them look like flowers to other animals. The parrots that are green or have the blue-green bodies, they look like leaves. Bright green parrots particularly just kind of disappear in the green leaves of the rainforest. That's not the only reason parrots have these bright colors though. It's not just for camouflage, okay? As it turns out, parrots have these very special eyesight. They can see what is called like ultraviolet colors. And by looking at these colored on the other parrots, they can tell which parrot is a male and which parrot is a female just by looking at their colors. That's pretty impressive. But not only that, they can also tell who is healthy by the colors of their feathers. For example, bright colors means that the parrot is healthy. If the parrot's not healthy, their colors are gonna be dull looking, okay? So, female birds or even male birds will choose a partner based on the color of the other bird's feathers. They will only choose partners that have brightly colored feathers because that means they're healthy, which means they're gonna have healthy babies. Think about it. If the parrots didn't have these special features for camouflage, they would not be able to hide from predators. And if they didn't have their special vision for seeing colors, they would not be able to choose healthy partners. The birds would either get captured by predators for wanting to eat them, or they would die from being sickly. Isn't God so wise? God wanted these birds to survive in their environment, so he made sure that they were equipped with exactly what they needed to survive. Read this with me. Genesis 1.21 says, And God created great whales, and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Everything God does is good. Now say with this, this with me on the count of three. One, two, three. God is the all-wise creator. Be sure to tell God that you think he's an awesome creator. I want you to do that this week, okay? Bye. Come back next week for another Creation Spotlight. All right, kids. Clap your hands, and you two at home, if you are alive. You're alive? What are some of the clues or evidence that a person is alive? You're breathing. Breathing? Your color of your skin is not blue. Oh, yeah. What else? Uh, your eyes open when you're awake. Eyes open? What are some other things that people do? That you get out as you having conversations. Oh, talking? Yes, those are all evidences of physical life. Thank you guys. You can go sit down.
But we're going to talk about today is the one that is the giver of life, and that is Jesus Christ. And that brings us to our verse. And it says in John eleven twenty five, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Let's break that down. Jesus said unto her, he's talking to Martha, and her brother had just died, and he was coming and telling her that uh, Lazarus would again rise from the dead, because Jesus Christ can decide who lives and when, because he, it says, is the resurrection. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus Christ is life. He's the creator of life, spiritual life, and physical life. And he is the resurrection. You know, Jesus Christ, he never, ever sinned. He never told a lie. He never, ever stole a piece of candy from the store. He never once disobeyed his mom. And he died, but then he rose again from the dead. He defeated death, hell, and the grave. So he is the one that gives spiritual life. And it brings us to our next part, he that believeth in me. In order to get life from Jesus Christ and be with him in eternity, you have to believe what he did for you on the cross. Because he never sinned, he was able to die for your sins. All of us are dead in trespasses and sins because we have told lies. We have maybe stolen something, even if it's a pencil or a piece of paper. Or we've disobeyed our mothers and she said, go clean your room. And you just went and shoved everything under the bed. See, those are sins. But Jesus Christ, because he never did those, he was able to defeat death and hell. And it says, though he were dead, yet shall he live. If you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you can rise from the dead. When your physical body dies, your soul can go to be with heaven or to be with Jesus in heaven for all eternity. You'll never, ever have to die again. And so we're going to go over that a couple more times. And when I say the verse, I want you to clap along at home because we don't have a song to this verse. Maybe you can make one up and send it in with a tune and we'll learn it. Okay? So we're just going to clap while we say this. Will you clap with me? Okay. John eleven twenty five. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. John eleven twenty five. All right, Salem, will you come up and do a motion for us? What kind of motion do you want to do while we say this verse? All right, we're going to pick out a hat and say it. All right. Good one, Salem. We'll do like this with our hats. Okay, ready? John eleven twenty five. 25. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. John eleven twenty five. 25. Thank you. All right, boys and girls, it is Bible story time. If you want to follow along today in your Bible, you can go to John chapter number 11, or maybe you want to read it later. That's in the New Testament, the fourth gospel. It tells about Jesus' life, uh, who he was, what he did, why he came. But first, we're going to practice our sleuthing skills. I need to start thinking like the detective, looking like a detective. I've got my detective disguise, glasses on. I'm going to show you a picture. I'm going to count down from 10, and you've got that much time to try to pick up on any clues that you can to figure out what's going on. Look for the details to try to determine what has happened here. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and one, now, what did you see and what does it mean? Let's take a look together. Obviously, we've got a man lying down here. I wonder why. Maybe he's really tired. Maybe he's asleep. But you know, that wouldn't make sense because the two ladies that are looking at him, they look really concerned. Sleep is pretty much a good thing. So he's probably something other than tired or sleeping. He's clutching his chest. And his face is kind of grimacing. 
Oh, I hope he's not dead. Maybe he's just really sick. I wonder who it is. I wonder who the two ladies are. It doesn't look like it's happening right now because, I don't know, they're dressed a little different. And I don't know, maybe it was from Bible times. In fact, this story took place 2,000 years ago. The people you see, the man's name is Lazarus. And these two ladies are his sisters. One of them is named Mary. The other is named Martha. They live in a town called Bethany, and they're very close friends of Jesus. But I wonder what has happened. Why are they so concerned? Why is he on the ground? You can read about it in John chapter 11. Lazarus, he has become very, very sick. And his sisters, they're so worried about him. Now, who do you know? that might be able to help. A doctor? I'm sure they call for a doctor. There's someone else. We've learned stories about Jesus and all the miracles that he performed. He gave a blind man sight. He healed lepers. He, he, he caused the deaf to hear. Jesus could certainly help Lazarus. The problem was that Jesus wasn't in Bethany at the time. Jesus had just been into Jerusalem for a feast, but the people there wanted to kill him because he said he was the Son of God. And so Jesus now, he's kind of in this area, Bethabara, by the Jordan River. But Mary and Martha and Lazarus, they live way down here in Bethany. So here's what they do. Mary and Martha, they, they get someone to go send a message to Jesus and ask if he could come right away because Lazarus is sick. And the messenger hurries off from Bethany. He goes to Bethabara. He finds Jesus. We're actually just going to read the story from John chapter number 11. The Bible says in verse number 3, his sister sent to him, sisters, Mary and Martha, sent to Jesus saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he knew exactly who it was. Jesus loved Lazarus. Again, he was a close family friend. And he knew exactly why the messenger had come. He knew exactly what was happening to Lazarus. How did he know that? Because Jesus was the Son of God. And when Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Jesus seems to indicate that Lazarus is not going to die from this sickness, but that somehow God would be glorified by this sickness. That, that seems odd. Let's see how this works out. In verse 5, Jesus loved Martha and his sister and Lazarus. Aren't you glad that Jesus loves you? Aren't you glad that just like Jesus knew everything about Lazarus and Mary and Martha, Jesus knows everything about us as well? In verse 6, when he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Now that seems odd. Jesus is in Bethabara. Lazarus is down in Bethany. And Lazarus is sick, and Jesus loves Lazarus, but when he hears the news, he stays put for two whole days. After those two days, the Bible goes on to say that Jesus said to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. And his disciples stopped and asked him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Jesus had to leave Jerusalem and go to Bethabara, because last time he was in Jerusalem, they wanted to kill him. And now the disciples are worried, but Jesus said, Aren't there not twelve hours in a day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there's no light in him. It's a whole lot easier to find your way to the bathroom when the lights are on than when the lights are off. If there's no light, you're going to trip and fall. Well, what does Jesus mean by that? Verse number 11, these things said he, and after that he saith unto them, 
Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Hmm, that almost sounds like a riddle. Lazarus is sleeping and Jesus is going to go to wake him up. The disciples didn't quite understand either. Then said to the disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Let him rest so he can recover. Howbeit, verse 13, Jesus spake of his death. For they thought that he had spoken of taking rest in sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. I thought Jesus said the sickness wasn't unto death, and now Jesus is saying that Lazarus is dead. What's going on? Verse 15, it just gets more confusing. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Jesus is giving us a lot of clues. He's giving us a lot of things to piece together and figure out what's going on. The sickness isn't unto death, but that God might be glorified. Now Lazarus is dead, but people says through this, people are going to believe on him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, let us also go with him that we may die with him. They were sure that if Jesus went back anywhere near Jerusalem, that he was going to be killed. But Jesus came, and when he got near to Bethany, he found out Lazarus has already been dead for four days. And as he approached the town, some of the people told Martha that Jesus was on his way. And verse number 20, as soon as Martha heard Jesus was coming, she went and met him. And Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. They had sent for Jesus because they wanted Jesus to come and heal Lazarus and make him well. But Jesus had waited and he hadn't come. And now Martha is asking him, Lord, why? But I know Martha said, even now, whatsoever thou would ask of God, God will give it to thee. And Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. See, Martha believed there was life after death, but she also knew that Lazarus was in the grave. And then comes our memory verse, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Now we're searching for clues about Jesus, who he is what he did, what he has the power to do. And on the count of three, I want you to say this with me. Jesus has all power. One, two, and three. Jesus, Jesus has, has all, all power. power. Jesus has all power. He has the power to give life. He has the power to raise the dead. Jesus is the creator of the heaven and the earth. And there is nothing that he can't do. Jesus then said this to, La to, to Martha, whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? You see, Martha knew that Lazarus would live again, but Jesus is asking Martha, do you think that I can raise him from the dead right now? Martha, do you believe that I have the power of resurrection, that is life from the dead? It's a really good question. Boys and girls, let me ask you that question. Do you believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life? Do you believe that Jesus really has the power to bring somebody back from the dead? Say this with me on the count of three. Everybody, here we go. One, two, three. Jesus, Jesus has all power. It's not just a good question for Martha. Do you believe Jesus can do this? It's a good question for us. Do we believe that Jesus can actually do what he said he was going to do? More importantly, do we believe that Jesus can give us eternal life? You see, we're all going to die. It's the ultimate statistic. 10 out of 10 people die, 150,000 people every single day. And one day it'll be our day and our heart will stop beating and our lungs will stop breathing. 
but we're going to spend forever somewhere. And what the Bible says is that Jesus has the power to give us eternal life in heaven. Do you believe that? It's important that we believe that. Now, Jesus continued his conversation with Martha. She said to him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. That's not exactly what Jesus had asked her. But when she said this, she went her way and called Mary her sister and said, The Master has come and calls for thee. And as soon as Mary heard that, Mary arose quickly and came to him and the Jews which were with her in the house and comforted her when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out. They followed her, saying, she grows, She's going to go to the grave. She's going to go weep for Lazarus. When Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet and said, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother hadn't died. And when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews weeping, everybody's crying because they're sad that Lazarus is dead. And Jesus said, where have you laid him? I want to see the tomb. I want to see the grave. And they took Jesus to the place. And the Bible says in John eleven thirty five, 35, it's the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. Everybody around said, behold, how he loved them. And some people said, could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind, have caused that even this man should not have died? Everybody's wondering why Jesus didn't come sooner and heal Lazarus. They're about to find out. Because here's the next thing that happens. Jesus groaned in himself and he came to the grave and the grave was a cave. And there was a stone over the mouth of the cave and Jesus said something very surprising. He said, remove the stone. And Martha spoke up and said, Lord, he's been dead for four days and by now decomposition has started to take place. Corruption has set in. Jesus Lazarus stinks. Don't open the grave or we're all going to get that putrid odor, that foul smell. And Jesus said, Mary, did I not tell you if you would believe that you would see the glory of God? So they did what Jesus said. They took the stone away and Jesus prayed before them to the Father. And when he got done praying, Jesus looked around and he said, Lazarus! Come forth. And as soon as he said that, out from that grave, Lazarus came and he's all wrapped up in grave clothes. And Jesus told the people there, loose him and let him go. Can you imagine being there that day when a man who's been dead for four days and his whole family is crying and mourning Someone shows up and says, get him out of the grave, and he walks out alive. But what did we learn? One, two, three, Jesus, Jesus has, has all power. power. He had the power to raise Lazarus from the dead. And here's what happened. Many of the Jews which came to Mary and seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. Jesus had just got done revealing himself at this big feast at Jerusalem as the Son of God. And a lot of people were angry. A lot of people were mad. A lot of people wanted him dead because they thought it was blasphemy. But then Jesus proves that he's the Son of God because he has the power to give life to Lazarus who was sick and who died. And now many of the people believe that Jesus is who he said he was the Son of God. But I'm going to ask you again. Do you believe that this actually happened? What we read in the Bible, it's not a fairy tale. It's, it's not just a story. It, it really happened. These were real people in real places, and Jesus really raised Lazarus from the dead. But not only that, he really has the power to give us eternal life because he's the perfect, sinless Son of God, who died on a cross for our sins and was buried and who rose again the third day. And the Bible says if we would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that we could be saved. And I hope you will. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your goodness to us and your grace and your mercy and your love and your power. Thank you for what the Bible tells us about who Jesus is, what Jesus did, and what he can do. 
Help us, Lord, to learn these lessons. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, here's our final song. We're so glad that you stayed with us this entire time. What did you learn in that lesson? If you don't know, maybe you should go back and watch it again. All right. All right, let's sing. God loves you.